This is Cobal Z, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This episode is going to be a little different. Um, here you see I'm sailing my Stralsen frigate. I'm sailing it actually back to PAP so, uh, PAP so that I can store it there because I need to get other ships out to show you. While I'm sailing this, because it's going to be a fairly long haul, I'm leaving Hav Havana. I'm going to talk to you about some of my favorite books that pertain to uh, pirates and or nautical things, especially around this era. I kind of briefly mentioned this before, but this is it. So, I'm going to start at the beginning. Now, this is not all books on this subject. Obviously, these are just... This is like my favorite books about pirates and about sailing um, with the background of Pirates of the Burning Sea, okay? The first one, and some of you know these, some of you probably read these, I hope so. The first one you should know, um, and I will list these below, uh, at least the names of the authors and the general kind of thing, so that you, if you want to look these up or you want to buy them on Amazon or whatever, you can. The first person you should know about is a guy named High Clute. And again, I will put it below, but his spelling is H-A-K-L-U-Y-T-S. High Clute was an individual, Richard High Clute, back in the kind of late 1500s, who started collecting uh, actual accounts of voyages. So there's a lot of actual accounts of voyages in the 1500s, of exploration voyages to the to the West Indies, to to Africa, to etc. The actual whole collection of High Clute is, I want to say, something like twenty or twenty-five volumes. You might be able to find it, probably not at a public library, but a university library. If there's one near you, you could probably find it, or maybe on on like some kind of a loan. I own what is just a small, it's the portable version, it's a, so it's a small selection, well small, it's like 500 pages of small selection of High Clute's voyages. So the cool thing about these is they are legitimate actual reports, you know, logs and such, written by people who made these voyages. So kind of cool if you, like me, you like uh, how things really were. You like true accounts of especially the, the great age of sail. Okay, so that's the number one. Number two. Some of you may have heard of this too. I'm going to butcher this name. Exquemelin. Exquemelin. I don't know. And I've seen it spelled many different ways. This is the account called the Buccaneers of America. Exquemelin. Or let's just call him X for now, okay? X was a person who sailed with now I totally am losing the name oh, that's typical of me hey, Sir Henry Morgan Henry Morgan well he wasn't Sir he was before Sir Henry X was uh, one part of the crew uh, he was kind of like a cook or a surgeon or something I don't remember but he was part of, he went on many of the great uh, uh, buccaneering adventures of Henry Morgan. And the Buccaneers of America is his account of that. Things like the Sack of Panama in 1680, whenever. It's so it's a really famous account. My version is fairly short. Well, it's like 200 pages. But... Again, if, like me, you are at all interested in actual accounts of things, especially things piratical, you should check that one out. Okay, next. A guy named James Burney, who was uh, in the British Navy, published in the early-ish 1800s, I want to say. A actually a kind of series called also coincidentally or not the history of the Buccaneers of America his his actual things you can find these I know 
uh, on for like iPad or Kindle or some kind of similar app because I have a couple of these for such a such a thing. James Aberney, he wrote so what he's these are not first hand accounts, right? Because he was a he was a naval officer. But he collected you know, he it's it's a historian's report basically of some of the things that the pirates, the buccaneers did. You know, by the way, there's a difference between the term buccaneer and the term pirate. Shit, I gotta be careful here. Is that a, yeah, that's a pirate. I'm gonna go around to Matthew Town actually. I don't wanna uh, yeah, I know. I don't want to lose my Stralsen. I mean, it's too low for me, but... So, Bernie w collected documents and etc. and wrote a very... I find entertaining and also... You know, historical account of the doings of both the pirates and the buccaneers. I was going to explain that. You probably know, most of you. Buccaneers, theoretically at least, operated under cover of governmental authority basically they would get letters of mark and they or they just would work for the government during time of war and the, some governor like Henry Morgan would say you know we need to go take Panama and the buccaneers would go out and try to take Panama they were sort of like pirates except they were working on behalf of their government to try to do things that favored their government and in the, at the same time get a lot of booty right Pirates normally are just pirates. Buccaneers, for example, would made a big thing of preying on the Spanish ships uh, for reasons that I don't have to go into and that you probably know or you can read about in Bernie's and other accounts. Um, pi pirates are just pirates. You know, you pirate a video game, you are a pirate. That's what pirates do. They steal things. Not that I'm casting judgment on that if you do that. Uh, so pirates tended to attack any ship they could find. They didn't care too much uh, what nationality it was. Maybe some of them quibbled. You know, if you were an English pirate, maybe you didn't attack English ships. But maybe you did, because you didn't really care. You were there to make money. That was your primary objective. And you pretty much didn't care how you do it, did it. Okay, i got to be careful. i got too much red. Okay, another person you need to know about is a guy by the name of William Dampier. D-A-M-P-I-E-R. I think, because I have searched for some of his books for a long time, I think there's a Dampier who is also like a, a medical professional currently, and you might find his works. But William Dampier, one of the famous ones is A New Voyage Around the World. How did I hit that? And he has a couple of accounts like that. He also sailed with the Buccaneers. This is kind of 1680-ish era. He was kind of a naturalist, really. One of the first of the naturalists. Because he would write accounts of the voyage they took. And also describe the plants and the flowers and the animals and whatnot that he found. Honestly, it's a little bit dry reading at times. But also very fascinating. Again, if you want to have a first-hand account of how things were in those days. I mean, let's talk about, for, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are, have been extremely popular, right? And they're fun. I enjoy them. But th these things I'm talking about, most of them, are about true accounts of what really happened and who really did what and where they went and why they went and what happened when they went there. Uh, for, for me, that makes a difference. I mean, I like both, but I like re knowing that I'm reading about something that really happened by someone who was really there. That's kind of a big deal for me. So, he wrote two or three books. You know, I'm not saying you have to read these, obviously. I'm just throwing these out there in case you don't know about them. <coughs> Actually, if you've played this game for very long, you probably have an interest in this and you know all these. You're like, yep, 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 Zed, I've heard of that, yep. The wind is always bad going this way. Where am I, by the way? I gotta see. Okay, Puerto Rico, I might be able to. Yeah, the wind is bad for that. Okay, now, Captain Woods Rogers. That name may be familiar to you. 
This is a called a cruising voyage around the world, or at least my virgin version, not virgin, <laughs> is called that. Woods Rogers, uh, at this stage in his career, this is right around almost exactly the time of Pirates of the Burning Sea. 17, like, early 17 to like 1710. Actually, hold on one sec. Yeah, he set out in 1708 on like what ended up like a three-year tour around the world, I think. Uh, he was acting as a privateer. Privateer? I misspoke. Let me correct what I said earlier about buccaneers. Buccaneers, the original technical definition of buccaneers is a bunch of kind of like shipwrecked sailors who landed on Hispaniola. There were a lot of wild cattle there in those days. Um, and they used to they used to kill the cattle and then they would they would barbecue the meat basically but it was called bucan and they used to bucan the meat that was the process so they became known as buccaneers buccaneers uh, so privateers is the other one that I was thinking about privateers acted with a letter of mark they acted on behalf of their government so Henry Morgan as a buccaneer um, Buccaneer grew out of that original definition, obviously, and became much broader and eventually became to mean almost the same as a privateer, except not quite. That's not a good description. Woods Rogers' account is very interesting um, because they go off, you know, you could, I, I won't spoil it, but they set off from England and then eventually they travel around the world. About three quarters of the way three, Woods Rogers gets kind of badly injured. I think it's like from a splinter, if I recall. So the last chunk of the journal is pretty vague because he, it was t too much pain to write very much. Pretty good historical count. Very interesting. He later became the governor of uh, Nassau, I want to say, in the Bahamas and started trying to eradicate... Uh, pirates, but that's that's another part of his career. Okay, now kind of in the middle here, I have to mention this is not exactly on point, but it's close enough. And if you like reading about sailing and about nautical things, you will probably like this as well. Oh, the wind changed a bit. Let me just go south, cut through here. It's uh, a bad idea. Um, C.S. Forrester, F-O-R-E-S-T-E-R, -E -E you probably know him. He is pretty well known, famous, well he's dead now, but for writing the Hornblower series. Horn Hornblower is a character uh, who is in the British Navy in the Napoleonic era, so it's later. You know, if this game takes place in like 1615... The Napoleonic era is like the late 1700s into the, like about 1815. But still, it's wooden ships, uh, there's big battles. The whole thing, I mean, the, big, the books are out of order, but if you read them in kind of a, not the order in which they were written, but in the order in which uh, he is promoted. Wow, I can't talk and say it the same time. It takes him from being basically a midshipman all the way up to being an admiral. Um, pretty entertaining books. Very, very, um, very true on the details. I have read things where Forrester, one of the things he did to, to write these books of his was he got hold of, I am not going to remember what it's called. Uh, you, you know already my memory is not that great, right? But he got a hold of, uh, of accounts, like basically reports that sailing ship captains would send back to the British government during the Napoleonic era. And he would study those, and then from those he would glean facts and ideas and concepts to, to put into his own book. So they are very true to the h idea of is that PAP? Where is it? Sorry, it's over here. Oh, that's good, good news. Except there's so the Hornblower series is a good series if you're interested in reading true-ish. You know, they're fiction, but true-ish 
accounts of sailing in the in the Napoleonic era, the great kind of past the great age of sail per se, but these were usually bigger ships. You know, they're navy ships. So it's a good read if you're interested. I only have three more and that's good because we're getting close to PAP. Uh, I gotta check. I gotta put this up again in one second. Okay, I might just be able to... Oh, what's that? Who's that? I don't know. That's Discord, surely. That's gonna be a pirate, isn't it? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt this. There's probably... Yeah, that's a pirate. And this is a pirate. I'm guessing... I'm passing... Oh shit, are they coming? Oh well, if I lose my ship, then I just get where I'm going faster, right? What are all the pirates doing around? Doesn't matter. Now I've lost PAP, sorry. Okay, so this this book is one of the first books I read that kind of interested me in pirates. It's out of print. It's a little harder to find. You might be able to find it. Um, perhaps it's available for like Kindle or iPad too. I'm not sure. This is a book by Frank Stockton, S-T-O-C-K-T-O-N. It's called Buccaneers and Pirates of Our Coast. It was originally published in the late 1800s. And what it does basically is it has uh, pretty much a chapter each on some of the more famous or infamous pirates and buccaneers. Um, it's a pretty interesting read. It's got some nice illustrations, uh, which I don't know if you care about that. Um, but it's it was the first book I really read that w made me think, wow, this whole this whole piracy and sailing and all that is pretty interesting. Um, so if you can find that, it's worth a read. Um, Frank Stockton, Buccaneers and Pirates of Our Coast. I have two left to show you. Uh, it's a good thing PAP is not any further away or I'd end up having to just say mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a guy named Samuel Elliot Morrison. M-O-R-I-S-O-N. Morrison was a, a naval officer in uh, World War one two I think it kind of crossed over he became if I have my facts right a, a like a vi rear admiral at least he has written a number he was a historian so he was a naval officer but also or perhaps after his service he became a, a naval historian especially a historian in general but especially a naval historian and there are a couple of books of his that I would recommend one is called Admiral of the Ocean Sea. It's a very detailed account of Columbus's voyages to America. Um, that obviously predates the time of this game, but this is this video is more about books that kind of are of interest to people like you and I, at least I assume. Um, Admiral of the Ocean Sea is a lengthy book. One of the things I love about this book is it's got a huge open out map. I love maps. That's a weakness of mine. It's got a huge open out map that uh, shows the voyages, where he went, you know, how day two he was here, day three he was here, etc. It's got a good description of life on board uh, ships in that day, 1400s. Uh, it's a really, really fascinating read. Morrison, in doing his research for that book and the other one I want to talk to you about, Morrison and a friend actually... Can I enter PAP from there? It looks like it, but I'm going to swing. Morrison and a friend of his actually sailed, I don't know, in a sailing ship, but at least sailed um, and flew over a lot of the areas that he was describing in the book. So he has first-hand knowledge of the areas, and there are a lot of pictures of like so and so an island where Columbus landed in this whatever day. There will be a picture of it in the book. It's a fascinating book. I recommend it a lot. And the final one is also by Morris and is called The European Discovery of America. Ugh, I can't move it all. 
again, obviously Morrison had a big in interest in, you know, the exploration of America because of the Columbus book. This one uh, talks not so much about Columbus, but talks about other people who set out to, you know, find so-called America. Um, it's a longer book, I want to say, but... And it goes, it's co it covers the period 1492 to 1616, so it's got a broader scope. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. His works are really interesting, especially his nautical ones, in my opinion. Um, but there you go. That's kind of a short or not so short list of things I would recommend you read. This has been Cobalt Zed, and I will talk to you soon.